Hello everyone, it's Simo. Welcome back to another podcast episode. I'm so excited to have you back. In this podcast, we're going to be talking about the creator economy as well as what a decentralized ad network means for small businesses and content creators and anybody in the digital marketing space. So let's dive right into it. I would like to preface this episode by saying that if you are not in the digital space as a content creator or an entrepreneur, you are definitely missing out. I really do believe that this is the perfect time for anybody to go ahead and start monetizing their skill sets, even if you don't think you have what it takes to go ahead and start providing service to people. Just understand that you have lived a life in which you have had to learn different skills. So you can actually package these skills up and you can sell these skills as products or services to an audience. And we're going to be talking about all of that in this episode today. Let's dive right in. I'm very excited to share with you guys everything that I've learned thus far in my journey. So essentially, when it comes to tech and the world of tech, things are progressing very, very quickly. We've seen that uh, only in 2014, I believe, the first iPhone came out or, or 2012 or something like that, right? And now it's 2022 and already our phones are like little uh, computers in our pockets. So things have really wildly progressed. Um, obviously, change doesn't happen overnight. Winter does not just become summer, right? It needs spring to go ahead and complete that transition. So things take time to evolve and complete. However, the nature of progress is one that is steady and one that is forward moving and forward thinking. And that is exactly how the technological age has been progressing thus far. We've only been moving up and we've only been moving forward and we've only been moving in one direction. And that is imperative to what it is that I'm going to cover in this episode today. Um, Because when it comes to the internet as a whole, things are changing. Uh, Things are changing rapidly in the field of marketing and in the field of the ad network space. The entire internet as a whole is moving from a a centralized uh, internet to a decentralized internet. So what this means is that large stakeholders in the tech field like Google and Apple and Facebook um, have now, uh, you know, slowly been um, places for creators to go ahead and start their own uh, ventures at. Um, However, what this means is that because there's such a surplus of creator economy of the creator economy on these platforms, the Internet as a whole is slowly moving to be a decentralized Internet, as well as what that entails is uh, having a decentralized ad network as well. So, um, you know, the Internet as we know it, uh, just for some background context, um, you know, contains all these different uh, basic modalities of function, right? You have everything on the internet. You have the market on the internet. Um, You have ad networks on the internet. You have social media um, barracudas on the internet and all these tech giants that take up a large space of the internet and a large space of user consumption. And so what has been happening with the centralized internet uh, that has included a centralized ad network is that a lot of businesses have been paying for ads over the past 10 years, over the past you know, ever since the internet actually really came out. But slowly, we've been seeing a shift, even over the past decade, to a decentralized ad network and to a decentralized internet overall. This is not something, again, that has happened overnight. Um, You know, it's been going on for a very long time. It's just only now that in 2022, with the rise of, um, with the rise of digital currency like crypto, uh, we are seeing a major shift. We're seeing a major involvement. And, you know, crypto, again, has been around for a while, um, but it only really took off, I'd say, in the past two years or so, right? Two, three years, right? But that doesn't mean that it hasn't been around long before that. So things take a while to come to the surface and to be a norm um, amongst people and to be uh, seen and really digested among, um, you know, uh, the majority of, uh, you know, the population. But that doesn't mean that they haven't been brewing underground for a while for a very long time right so as we move as we shift slowly to a decentralized uh, internet uh, which includes a decentralized ad network as a whole a lot of changes are going to start happening they've already been happening but they're going to continue to happen Um, so what this means for small brands and businesses is this no longer will facebook advertising and paid advertising uh, just as a whole really be a norm you will start to see a shift, uh, you know, if you haven't already, if you haven't pay, been paying attention, you'll start to see a shift from, um, you know, advertisements being in magazines or newspapers or in print um, or even paid ads, paid Instagram ads, paid Facebook ads, paid TikTok ads, right? 
uh, you'll start to see a shift from that to more organic generated content, more user-friendly content, more content that caters to the consumption of the consumer themselves, which is really, really good for um, small tech startups, for content creators, for digital creators, for micro-influencers, etc. And why this is really good for, uh, you know, particularly these companies is that, you know, the power the transfer of power will will start to slowly happen. You'll slowly start to see a transfer of power in which organic marketing is taking over paid ads and paid advertising and paid marketing, right? So I say this all the time. If you're not on Instagram, if you're not on TikTok, nobody knows who you are. And I say that with all the respect in the world because it is very crucial that, you know, either even if you're Kylie Jenner, right, no matter who you are, right, you should at least stay on top of technological trends because like I've mentioned in the beginning of this podcast, things change rapidly over time all of the time. So, you know, it's not just that things change year to year, but things change on a micro level month to month and then on an even smaller fractal level day to day. So if you can keep an eye out for these trends and if you're, if you're somebody that has a, a business, right, uh, you know, again, like I said, even if you're Kylie Jenner, right, like, you know, if you have a business, it is important to keep an eye out for how these trends are moving, in what direction things are moving, right? Oh, okay, so the internet is now becoming uh, more decentralized. A lot of the monopolization is kind of dissipating as power is being handed over to smaller creators, right, and smaller tech startups, right? So that's really important to keep an eye out for and to be mindful of so that you can identify which side of the equation you're on. Are you on the consuming side uh, of content or are you on the production side of content? Because like I mentioned, anybody in the world can have a brand or business that runs and that generates passive income for them and that they use to serve other people. And I'd like to to preface any sort of business discussion by saying that business is about service. You are not in the business of business to run a business. <laughs> you are in the business of business to provide service to people, right? To the audience, the select audience that you are trying to serve. Because um, when you can provide value to people, free value to people, content in which you are teaching people, right? They they view you as an authority. They view you as a, um, a reputable... Um, teacher in your field, uh, in your field, you know, in the field that you cater to, uh, or operate within, sorry, rather. So, um, so what happens when people view you as an authority, when your audience begins to view you as an authority is that there is a higher likelihood that they will, uh, subscribe to or purchase your products or services. However, that is probability based and that should never be the goal. Right, because if you're if you're in the business of business just to sell or just to make sales, then go work in sales. Right, I say this all the time: go work for a company that will give you commission for your sales. You will have a much easier time doing that. It'll be much less stressful for you, right? Because we all gotta eat, right? So, so go do that then. You know, go find yourself a sales job then, right? Because if you're if you are in the online space as a digital creator, an influencer, an entrepreneur, a, a small uh, tech startup and you are trying to simply sell, uh, you're not going to have, um, you're not going to see, you know, you're not going to see growth. You're not going to see growth. You're not going to see scalable growth. Number two, number one, number two, number three, you're not going to see, uh, ROI because the, if you look at it, uh, as if you were watching a bar chart or a graph, right? Um, you have to have a certain amount of momentum. This is exactly what I was talking about when it comes to trends, right? You don't just go from winter to summer, right? You have to have some amount of momentum um, from winter to spring to summer. There has to be momentum built for the end goal, which in this example would be reaching summertime, right? There has to be momentum built. And so when it comes to even like a line graph, right? Um, if you if you watch the market or what have you, like you'll see how, um, you know, with the candlesticks, it's slowly a gradual increase over time, step by step by step, things move up slowly. And, you know, it's the same thing with the opposite case moving downward. So things take time to build on themselves. So if you're simply in the business of making sales, if you're simply just trying to make sales with your business or your brand, you know, you're always going to reach a plateau. You're always going to have a plateau because you are looking at your goal as being um, one dimensional. Okay. Right. 
And so you're out here trying to really like pitch yourself and, and, you know, strive to make sales and all these things. And without establishing yourself as an authority first or a teacher first, right, how are you providing value to people and solving their problems for them? You're not. You're not, right? You're simply just trying to make sales. So people will not view you as somebody that they will trust enough to buy from or, or to purchase any service from. And, um, and at the end of the day, you are a creator because you wish to create right? You are a creator because you wish to create and you wish to give, 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 give. That's the thing about creation. Whether you are a tech giant or a small startup, right? Your products and services ideally should be free for the most part. They should be pro bono because uh, you are ensuring that your audience has enough uh, of a place to operate, right? And enough of of a place to establish trust within you, right? Within your services, so this is really, really important. And this is actually what all of these tech giants do, like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. Their platforms are free, which is another reason why organic marketing is really skyrocketing. Because um, a lot of people are realizing that they would like to start their own business now um, as the internet becomes more and more changeable and, and user-friendly. Um, and so a lot of people are taking to these social media platforms, guys, to start their businesses. And so a lot less people are working actual corporate jobs, right? And a lot more people are finding ways to make income online, being a service provider or a teacher or a mentor, which ultimately, you know, is the same thing at the end of the day because you're going to have a a product or service that you package up to sell to your audience, right? That trusts you, right? So, So a lot of people are moving more towards the online space and more towards these social media platforms. So what that means is that um, a lot more control is being given to content creators on these platforms and a lot less control is being given to large corporations um, just as a whole, okay? And and when I say control, I'm talking about visibility. That's what control is, okay? So again, like I mentioned, if you're not on TikTok or Instagram or what have you, like nobody really knows who you are, your visibility is your asset, right? Um, that's your control, You have a certain amount of control. Let's say you have like 50K on any social media platform. You have an audience of 50K. You have control over what those 50K, give or take, or let's just say 25K people. Let's let's reduce that by half because analytics, right? So you have control over what, let's say, 25K people or even 20K people or 15K people are going to see that day on your stories, on your feed, on your tiktok reels whatever right you have control over what what content you are giving to people and what um help and education free value free value content you are providing to people right and so um that is your sphere of influence that is exactly what control is control is sphere of influence right so in that way now that you've provided free content and and you provided value to your audience they have seen you as somebody that shows up every single day consistently on these platforms. And over time, you know, you will also have learned so much in your field, in your niche, that you will have become an authority to go ahead and lead a community of people. Or, um, you know, I don't really like the term lead in this circumstance, more so formulate a community of people in which everybody has the same problems that they would like to solve everybody has the same goals and desires and shared common interests as a common denominator of you know how they would like to progress whether that's fiscally personally what have you right so that is very important the power of forming a community is very it's priceless because look even if these tech giants shut down like instagram did in september of 2021 for like a day right even if these tech giants shut down you're still going to have your community. So a community, at the end of the day, is what you should be striving to form as a business owner, a small startup, um, uh, you know, or a content creator, a digital creator, right? A community is what you should be really striving to form. And you can do that in various ways. There are various ways to form communities. Um, You know, there are lots of tools that you can use for that. Um, But... um, you know, at the end of the day, it's really just about providing value, right? Look at Facebook. Facebook is free to go ahead and use and access and build a Facebook group on, right? Have a community on there, right? 
Instagram is free to use and access and build a community on Instagram. Same thing with TikTok. So we have all the tools that we need. Really, we do. And there are many other different apps if you'd like to learn more about which tools I personally use and which tools I've seen really uh, pop off in the creator economy. Go ahead and follow my Instagram account, None of Their Biz. So, um, you know, these are, these are the things that we have free access to. We should be utilizing them. We should be utilizing Instagram and TikTok and Facebook no matter who you are. It maybe costs like, how much did it cost me? I'm not sure, but it probably costs like 800 to file your business name, right? Um, that's an investment, right? So, so after that, you know, the majority of your, of your um, streamlining is free, right? Besides, you know, we can get into the fiscal part of it in another episode, right? Obviously, you need to um, pay operative costs each month to different platforms and stuff like that. Um, but in general, it doesn't co- or maybe it costs less than 800 to file your business, right? Official business name to get it registered, right? So my point is that anybody and everybody can do this. Um, even if you don't have the exact amount of money right now, understand that you can file in the future and you can make this a reality, right? And you do have services and skills that the world needs. The world needs to hear your story and you do have value to provide to people. I think that's the biggest thing, right? People think that they can't start a business because they don't have value to provide or um, they don't know what they'll talk about or they don't feel like they're interesting enough. Your personal brand is you, it is your story, it is the value that you provide to people, and it is the personality that you have as you teach and provide value to people um, towards the problems that you'd like to solve for them. That is your personal brand. Everything else, like the aesthetics of it and the branding, the font, the, you know, all of those other things are just like the, the clothes, you know, on the, on the body. But the meat and the bare bones and, and like everything else, uh, that is you. And everything that I mentioned, your personality, your story, and your ability to provide value. That is your personal brand, period. Okay, so all of us have a personal brand. Whether you know that or not, you are your own walking, talking personal brand. Okay, and a lot of, you know, even if you want to get into like celebrity culture and things like that, a lot of these celebrities have built personal brands simply off of their very existence, which makes them celebrities in a way. Um, but not only that, you've seen that a lot of celebrities have actually started business and startups of their own, right? Like I mentioned, Kylie Jenner, just as an example, um, probably has an entire team of, um, psychologists and tech analysts that, you know, keep her other team up to date on what she should be doing when it comes to marketing her products, because marketing is huge when it comes to anything that you are selling when it comes to anything that you are selling in your business or when it comes to even just having a business in the first place. If you are not marketing your products, if you are not being seen, if you don't have visibility, nobody knows you and nobody is going to purchase from you. And purchasing is like the last step of the entire sequence of of, uh, steps anyway, right? So so don't even focus on the purchasing uh, of, of your products. Don't even focus on the sales. Focus on visibility, focus on marketing, focus on organic outreach, focus on training the algorithms on whichever platform that you decide to pursue, uh, you know, for really pushing your, your, um, brand out there, uh, focus on training the algorithm, right? Focus on really providing, um, organic user generated content that can help other people and that actually teaches people how to solve a problem that they have, that you're passionate about helping them with, right? And if you go on TikTok, you'll notice, just as an example, even on Instagram, you'll notice that a lot of these paid ads have become so user-friendly and and they've become so, um, you know, personalized even. They look so organic. So, you know, I'll I'll, I'll be on TikTok and it'll take me like 10 minutes to figure out, or like 10 seconds more so, to figure out that I'm actually viewing a paid ad because it looks like such a real trending organic video, right? The video has trending sounds, it has trending text, um, the formatting of the video is that which is a trending format right now on the TikTok, pl- TikTok platform, like, it looks like a very real, uh, you know, organically marketed video. So, that's, like, huge, because literally, like, that makes me interested immediately as a user uh, into what they're selling. Like, I become immediately interested as to what it is that they are selling to me, Right? what um, products or service they're providing, right? 
because the video looks so uh, authentic and organic, right? So that is like the main focus when it comes to marketing now is how organic can you make your your content? How organic can you market your product or service? And how can you do that in a way that is financially friendly to your business, number one, but also number two, scalable to your business? Because guess what? Growth, like I mentioned before, doesn't really happen if you are focused on making sales and if you are simply doing things like paid advertising. Growth doesn't happen like that, right? Growth doesn't happen in that way. Growth happens when you can build a community and when you can actually create content that generates more visibility over time meaning you are growing your following you are growing your community you are growing the eyes the visibility that sees you right the eyes that see you right you are growing all these things so you are scaling your business you are scaling you are climbing you know like I mentioned the step by steps uh you know when it comes to anything market trends um trends in nature right even if you just want to look at gravity (laughs) You know, like things start from a high point and then they take a few seconds or so to drop to a low point. You know, nothing just teleports, right? Nothing is instant, right? So so it's basic physics that things have to be scalable and things have to be, um, things have to have the proper established foundation to be scalable. And this is especially important in business because if you are not building the proper foundations to go ahead and build something that is scalable, you are going to be going nowhere in business you're going to be running like on a hamster wheel you see what i'm saying or like running on a treadmill right and this is a lot of people's issue when it comes to business you know and then you get hyper focused on making sales you get hyper focused on wanting to sell because you're like okay hey i'm actually really not making money from this venture i need roi i have um you know back end processes that i need to be paying for um you know i have inventory i have all these things i have even um i have uh, employees right so, so people get really frustrated and then they get hyper-focused on needing to sell and that's the exact wrong direction that you want to be going in. You don't want to go in that direction, right? That is the wrong direction that you, that you want to be going in. You want to be actually instead focusing on, okay, how can I actually make my content more user-friendly and gain more visibility? How can I actually um, network with people who are doing what I'm doing and you know, um, get, get value from them and actually get mentorship from them and, um, you know, build networks, um, build networking, uh, connections in that way. Right. Like that is what you want to be focusing on. And then, because when you, when you can do that, you build a community, even of people that are doing exactly what you're doing. So you get a few things. Number one, you get free education. Number two, you get support. And number three, you get ideas for, you know, how you can further, um, repackage or repurpose your products or services number one number two build more stable foundations for um you know uh organic marketing uh number three build more stable foundations for scaling right um like you know you can learn more about like which tools you need to use which applications you need to be using um which systems you need to be automating or kind of integrating into your business right um all these kinds of things so Um, You know, I am so excited about the fact that we're moving slowly into a decentralized ad network and a decentralized internet overall. I think it's blissful. I think it's beautiful. I think it gives a lot of creative control and a lot of creative power to, um, you know, small startups in tech and just small startups, um, you know, overall small businesses as well, right? Um, Content creators, micro-influencers, right? Um, And that makes me very happy to see because no longer will small creators be taken advantage of by larger companies that will pay you close to nothing for a brand deal or for a video or um, regard or anything that you, that it is that you would like to do, right? And this is why, again, the world of tech is so amazing because the trends continue. Nothing is stagnant. Nothing plateaus. You know, nothing is... Um, is flatlining everything just continues to grow and build upon itself like the entire world of tech itself is scalable right so that's very 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 exciting for me um and you know it's even more thrilling and exciting and challenging when like you see change happening and you have to adjust your business or um system processes to kind of match that like let's say an algorithm changes or what have you like you have to really study the algorithm to go ahead and be able to um kind of re steer your content in that direction and that's huge because number one you get better uh, content performance 
right, when you do that and when you stay up to date with your studying. Um, and, and number two, um, you know, you get to learn more about how things are progressing as a whole in the technological world overall. Because when an algorithm changes on TikTok, it doesn't just change on TikTok. You can bet that Instagram probably changed their algorithm as well, right? You can bet that Facebook probably changed, uh, it's, is about to change their algorithm as well, right? And you can bet the new systems of operation will probably be introduced to Facebook soon. Like, for example, TikTok was the first platform to explode businesses with its short-form video content creation. Then Instagram adopted the Reels uh, function- functionality, right? Um, and Instagram introduced Reels to go ahead and, and try to keep up with TikTok, right? And then Instagram exploded its organic um, user reach with Reels, right? And so now people can um, explode their businesses even further on Instagram using Reels. And then Facebook came up with a Reels option that is right next to the um, status like posting a status uh, option, right? You can go ahead and just click Reels and you can upload all your TikTok, repurposed TikTok content to Facebook Reels, which is, I mean, come on. There's literally no better way to explode reach, to explode your visibility, and to get yourself out there as an established content creator and a teacher and an authority in your field of education. So, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, if you are a small business owner, content creator, um, micro influencer, small tech startup, or what have you, um, th- you know this is just a reminder to keep going. And that um, business is about service. At the end of the day, it's not about business. Um, you know, actually, the name, the the term business is such an umbrella term. It's such a loose term, right? Um, really, what it is is about providing value to people. At the end of the day, and the best way we can do that in today's day and age, is via the internet that is slowly becoming more and more decentralized and more and more of an open sort of pond to various content creators all over the world. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm so happy to have you here. I literally could talk about this topic forever. It's one of my favorite topics to ever discuss. If you have any questions, don't be shy. Go ahead and reach out to me on ai.sima at Instagram. Go ahead and follow my Instagram account at none of their biz on Instagram and I will talk to you guys in my next podcast. Peace.